What is NDI and why is everyone clamoring to jump on the NDI bandwagon? Well, today we'll find out and uncover the myths and legends that got us to this point in time. And remember, if you like these short videos, please like and subscribe to our channel. NDI, or Network Device Interface, was developed by NewTek in 2015 to create a standardized way to deliver high-def, frame-accurate video over an existing gigabit IP network that's suitable for video production switching. The key feature of NDI is auto-discovery, which allows NDI-compliant devices to quickly locate and make available video sources with a plug-and-play type simplicity. This is made possible by the incorporation of MDNS, or Multicast DNS, which is known to a lot of us as Zero Configuration Networking. The biggest misconception among AV professionals is that NDI is a network transport method. You know, transport methods like TCP and UDP. This is simply not true, and the misunderstanding leads to incorrect either-or statements like do you walk to school or carry your lunch? <laughs> In this very way, you might ask, shall I choose HDBase-T or NDI? Well, you see, NDI is simply a network data layer over the transport layer. It uses TCP or UDP as a transport, and it simply makes it a zero configuration experience in the application layer. Additionally, NDI provides a very efficient codec so that we can be assured of frame-accurate sync. Now, this is huge when we're dealing with production switching applications and is one thing that's been missing in IP streaming in the past. So instead of asking HDBase-T or NDI, you would ask HDBase-T or IP streaming. This is because whether you're sending video over a proprietary link, such as an Extron, Kramer, Atlona, or Crestron, or a standards-based platform like HDBase-T, those are still point-to-point -point delivery methods. In other words, they require your own dedicated pathway. Now, IP streaming allows your video to coexist on a network with all kinds of other data simultaneously. You can use switches and routers to send video all over a facility or a campus using their existing infrastructure. Now, distances become an afterthought because you just need a network switch every 330 feet. Now, this isn't just NDI either. IP streaming can be done with RTP, RTSP, and RTMP as well. They all typically run right over the top of a TCP IP network. RTP, RTSP, and RTMP streams don't auto-locate or use zero-configuration technology. You need to manually set them up. Plus, they don't guarantee a frame-accurate video signal, which is important when you're using video production switching. But they all work perfectly for moving video from one point to another over an IP network. NDI is, of course, more expensive. Hopefully, I've given you enough to get past the apples and oranges thing, and I hope you now understand the advantages of IP streaming over proprietary links. And more importantly, I hope you have a better view of when to use NDI streaming and when RTP, RTSP, and RTMP streaming is adequate. So as always, please like and subscribe to our channel if you found this short video helpful.